Yellow Mondeo Mark 1. Kind of like that. There's a couple of minis that I recognise from the Isle of Wight and Bewley previously. I like this Volvo as well. Touring car inspired. Obviously in the state. 850. I really like this. Netting in the back, spare wheel. And the seats are in there as well, so I can always make it back into a five seater bucket seats. I have a hunch that this Morris Minor is hiding something a little bit special underneath the uh, the bonnet or the back end in this case so it looks like it's probably going to be rear engine rear wheel drive look how chunky these tires are they're absolutely huge seats pushed back all the way so it's just a two-seater with this big old dashboard probably custom built i'd assume wide thing gorgeous little mini here it's got a supercharger and everything so even more power even more go karty feels with this wooden style dashboard and interior it's got a little dash counter there recording everyone looking vlog section with this it's even got a little fridge or cooler i really like the color on this nice cool next to it as well uh, the cars that are in the assembly area a lot of them are the guys that have, have come along. there is petrol pet another youtuber and here's some of his vehicles this is his mini roadster, Ruby I think it's called, off the top of my head. It's fairly recently acquired Porsche as well. And I think, judging by the stickers on this, this Ford pickup truck, I'm not quite sure on the model, it's probably related to Mel. I do know he's a big fan of his cycling and bikes and things, so... I'm pretty sure this is one of his vehicles, but yeah, three, three petrol ped vehicles down here at Thruxton today. Of course, he does work quite closely with the uh, Hendy these days, so it's no surprise that he's brought these vehicles down to this event. Wow, look at this Lotus. Sparkly gold. Also a bit of a play on the John Player special Lotus livery. I quite like that, it's different. But I also like this Skoda Fabia Monte Carlo, built to celebrate the Skoda rallying wins with Monte Carlo. I think when these first came out in the previous generation of Fabia, they were 1.2 litre TSI, whereas I think now they're 1 litre TSI engine. But they come with special paints and things and just give a bit more of a luxurious feel with trims and the like. Looks like the Honda Civic Type R in here and this Nissan 180SX, I think it is. Having a bit of a jap off. Mine's out of the gutter, people. Peugeot 208 GTI. One of the cars built to try and topple the Ford Fiesta ST off of its Hot Hatch King pedestal at the time. The Fiesta ST at that point was one of the best driving small hot hatches there was out there. For this. This is pretty good as well, alongside the, uh, the Clio. This car was heralded at the time. Really nice car to drive, manual gearbox, small chunky steering wheel, encouraging you to just keep grabbing on and going for it. Big go-kart like. Great little car. Next to it, another great little car. Abarth 500. I have a soft spot for the Italian cars on this channel. This is a lineup I quite like. Fiesta ST, latest generation. 
the car quite clever in the sense that it can shut off a cylinder to save fuel. So I think it's three cylinder as normal and then obviously shuts down once it's then two. Oh look, a Nissan Cube is just leaving. Anyway, I really like the colour on this. It's a shame though that the Ford Fiesta is now going out of production as of I think either later this year, not there's much left of 2022, or ne mid next year I think it is. I've lost track with the Fiesta really, but it's a shame not to have this car basically be around anymore. I noticed that uh, from reading other articles, the Polo seems to be heading in the same direction. Which I guess kind of makes sense, given that Ford and Volkswagen have a bit of partnership at the minute. But when the Polo goes, that also means the death of things like the Skoda Fabia and the Seat Ibiza, I think. Which is sad, because that's essentially four Super Minis off the market. Next to it, a car that's long been gone, the Ford Orion. I think this is a 1.6, or it would have been as standard. Let's just go and have a quick look. Yes, indeed, love those graphics. 80s graphics are just the best. Especially with that on the window as well. But next to it, this gorgeous little Vauxhall Nova. It's 1.2 injection k reg getting towards the end of production with the Nova. And just before the Corsa came into the UK, actually. It was already called the Opel Corsa in mainland Europe, but here in the UK we kept just calling it the Vauxhall Nova up until the next generation. So, a bit of fun facts for you there. Volkswagen up GTI, love those cars, very similar to the uh, 100 HP in performance figures. I'm sure it drives quite differently being three cylinder, I think it's got 115 horsepower, something like that. Never not going to love a GTI interior on a Volkswagen. This is quite different, I have no idea what it is. Imola 2, so Cobra Imola 2 seats. Looks to be a kit car, fiberglass dashboard. It's a little bit different, this. I like going to events like this because it does show different vehicles. Yes, yeah, so if you know what this is, please let me know down below. Toyota GR Yaris, an amazing feat of engineering, basically a rally car built for the road. Had a go in one of these after the fuel power party because somebody brought one along to it. I will add, I was a passenger in that case. And it's as good as all the automotive journalists say that it is. It's a brilliant piece of engineering, this. Four-wheel drive, tiny body. And the way it picks up speed is absolutely immense. Words can't describe just how quickly a thing picks up speed. Meanwhile, next to the Yaris, a Ford Mustang, Mach 1. I'm assuming this is a special edition, judging by the text down the side. I'm guessing those aren't just some badges you can buy off eBay or Amazon. Or Wish, if you do so, uh, Wish. I'm liking the colour on this, the spoiler looks cool. I hope this has got the V8s. Being Mac 1, that suggests it probably does. And look at this, Lotus Evora. When was the last time you saw one of these? Most people, when they buy a Lotus, they usually go to the Elise or the Exige. But this person's gone different. They've gone for a bit of a softer ride, a bit more usable every single day. The Evora is the perfect everyman supercar or sports car. Depends what category it's in. VW Lupo and a special paintwork. Got a little character that drags behind it. BMX is in the back by the looks of it. That Peach Lupo. I've always liked the Lupo, it's a great little car. It was amongst those that I considered for a first car when I passed my test before I knew what I was actually going to be driving. Quite like them as the uh, GTI. I think there is one actually here from a, a brief walk around before I started filming. But yeah, obviously the precursor to the Volkswagen Fox, which I guess was then precursor to the Volkswagen Up, which has been an incredibly popular car for Volkswagen, especially with the Seat Me and the Skoda Citigo versions. But this car sort of, I guess, started that small car revelation for uh, Volkswagen. There we go, here's a Lupo GTI. I think it's got a 1.6 litre engine, probably from the Polo, I would imagine wider wheels, a bit of a upgraded bumper shall we say, and obviously rear bumper and diffuser and things like that. Much more firm ride over standard. This has clearly been modified a little bit, the uh, gear changes a tiny bit different to say the least. But again, really like these cars, very much remind me of the Panda. Maybe not so much in style, but in performance spec at least. Now, for those who have watched the channel for a while, you will know I don't really know a huge amount about American trucks. And every single time it's, look, that load bay is huge. And factually, they are. They're incredibly big, especially compared to European P. 
pickup trucks. But I do like this. Chevrolet Thriftmaster, very low. Slammed, obviously. Huge wheels, lovely grille. The paintwork's a bit interesting, but I bet it does only something like eight miles to the gallon. I bet it's probably hiding quite a bit more power than it maybe would have had a standard underneath the bonnet. The number plate's quite subtle on the bottom there as well. Always means to get a look in at a show like this, aren't there? Mini jet black and one well, that's been quite heavily modified. But over here, Volkswagen Polos, one is a bread van. The bread van was a great little car. All that practicality in the back. Essentially, it was a very, very small estate, but with hatchback features, I suppose. But I like these. These things are absolutely charging a bomb now. You cannot get these cheaply anymore. And that's because the Volkswagen scene is just driving them up and up and up and up and up. Polo hatchback. I think it's uh, Mark II or Mark III, this one. I get a bit confused with the Polos because it's not quite as linear as you maybe would think. Well, I'm pretty sure I choose a Mark III. You can see the face difference in them. The Polo bread van did actually change its face later on to a similar style to this. Whereas this is much more keeping with sort of Mark II generation. Back to the 80s. Da, 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 da. The most modern, up to date Megane RS. A great little car. These Renault have always been very, very good at making cars are great at the track. Their chassis is almost second to none. They are almost the pinnacle of motorsport chassis for hatchbacks. Of course Renault over the years have built up a bit of a reputation for maybe not having such good reliability, especially electronically. But I think by this point they've sorted out all those little niggles and issues. There goes another little mini. Gorgeous little thing Mark II by the looks of it, judging by those lights. Clio V6, we'll go over and have a quick look at that. The number plate on that is brilliant. But this, Alpine Renault A110, the original Alpine. Classic seats, very low, very cramped. I think it's rear engine, this as well. Huge exhaust, yes, it is rear engine. Oh, I love this, especially the original badging. That's gorgeous. This thing's obviously got a lot of attention here today. But yeah, these cars really popular. Very, uh, very good races in the Monte Carlo Rally. But we shall move on from the Alpine. And I shall leave you with this shot of it. As interesting as things like Porsches, Aston Martins, Lamborghinis, Ferraris and things are, I'm always attracted more to things like this, the Clio V6, because it's sort of I guess a hyper version of the working man's hot hatch. I mean, I do like these as well, Toyota Supra, the latest generation. In fact, I have actually driven one of these very briefly at the SMMT test day this year. And to put it this way, I really enjoyed it. It's a brilliant car. I know a lot of people have questions over this because it shares a lot of underpinnings with BMW. But I don't think it takes away too much from the experience. And of course, those are going, oh, it's not a proper Supra. Well, Toyota themselves make it so it must be. But back to the V6 Clio. Huge amounts of power, rear wheel drive, V6 engine hidden in the back there, so it's pretty much right behind your ear. Two seater, of course. Love the colour, of course, wide tyres, wide body kit as well. You kind of need it with this. I think uh, good friend Matt Pink, he said that his cousin had one of these cars back when they were fairly new, if not actually new. He said he had to sell it in the end after nearly killing himself twice, so a lot of power in a very small car. Mm, recipe for disaster, maybe. But an awesome thing to uh, absolutely admire. I love playing with these cars on racing games and things. I love racing games. That's probably the closest I'm ever going to get to driving one of these. But this is pretty much a hero car for me, especially as somebody who uh, drove a Renault as a first car. I know, a very loose connection, but you kind of like the brands that you uh, you end up buying, don't you, really? Shark knows BMW M5. These things are just absolutely gorgeous, especially compared to the stuff BMW is coming out with these days. I'm sure mechanically they're absolutely fine, and technologically-wise, I'm sure they're packed. But styling-wise, eh, it's not for me. 
But this though, this very much is. I really like the colour on this. It's not too dissimilar actually to my Renaults, which may be controversial to many listening to this video. We went to uh, Retroride's Weekender earlier this year. We had um, one of these shark nosed BMW M5s parked up next to us. It wasn't in this car and it wasn't this car, but the modification scene for these cars as well is really, really well supported. They're just nice classics to look at. But also, here's a classic everyone loves, Volkswagen Golf GTI. Hasn't got the P-shaped wheels, so a bit of a downer on that side for me, but it looks good. I like these wheels though, they do suit it, and the centre caps as well. I've just noticed as well, after looking at this, the interior has been stripped out, so maybe it's got a bit more power than it would usually do as standard. Sparco seats, racing harnesses by the looks of it, yep, fire extinguisher. I'm willing to bet this has got a bit more power than standard. Here's another car that I really, really do like, so I almost bought one quite a few years ago, Fiesta ST Red Edition. One litre, 140 horsepower, give or take, I think it's actually about 138, it's the stated figure. Use the one litre EcoBoost engine, which of course is an engine that is massively popular these days, but I have heard does have a few timing chain issues, in fact there's actually another one over there. But quick little cars, the torque delivery in this is just insane. And somebody went from a fairly standard family car as their first car, I suppose, to a more warm hatch this would be classed as. Yeah, not a huge amount of space in the back. But of course, being um, Fiesta of this generation, great driving capabilities. The chassis on this, absolutely brilliant. Because we're at Thruxton, which of course is a racetrack, Thruxton does offer driving experiences here, and many of the cars they have as part of that are Porsches. In fact, there's a big old line of them just up here. But they also offer drives in the Alpine A110, the new one, Jag F type, and even the Ford Puma ST by the looks of it. I've actually driven one of the Caymans here as a previous experience. Great fun, I actually really like the Cayman. It drives very nicely. Hmm. Sunglasses on for this shot. A lineup of Nissan L Grand. They all came in together, so I suspect it's a club gathering. What a place to do it. The old Grand's a great little van. I don't think they're actually sold here in the UK brand new, so I imagine these are all Japanese imports. Oh, look, a little Lotus poking in from there. Quite useful little vans, though. Going briefly back to the Porsches, though, this is the best colour for a Porsche car, and I will not hear otherwise. A few more cars here that are part of the Thruxton driving experience. Yes, that is a Suzuki Jimny, Ford Puma ST, Megane RS. Is it a trophy? Doesn't say. Could be though. Ford Focus ST. That one, however, is a trophy art. Two Alpine A110s. Fairly new additions actually here. I think they were introduced maybe last year. Another Focus ST. Cayman and BMW, I think it's an M2, driven by Tiffany Dell. That's a play being quite loud. I've heard Tiffany Dell's somewhat of an okay driver, I suppose. And of course, Hendy being the people that organise this event, bring down a few vehicles themselves Toyota GR Yaris, BMW, I think it's a 1 Series now, not quite sure. Range Rover SVR, BMW M2, Mustang. I think this Lotus has just tagged on the end. <laughs> it's always amazing me just how big American cars are compared to European cars. Like, this is a fairly standard sized pickup truck for the American market. And then when you look at it next to the tiny Lotus next to it, well, it's adorable. We've got two Volvos here, and I will say I don't know a huge amount about Volvos. Genevieve is much more knowledgeable on them than I am, having grown up with a lot more of them than I have. I'm pretty sure this particular car here looks quite similar to one that my good friend Joseph Lloyd of Lloyd Vehicle Consulting has just bought at an auction, which I think has actually been reviewed by uh, Matt of Furious Driving. Flying moose on there. And that's quite nice, got a little dedication to someone who looks like they're no longer with us, quite sadly. Nice looking car, this. And here's the front end of that Lotus that was peeking out between the El Grands. Lovely little Europa this. Marks the fact that Lotus were World Constructors Champions in F1. 
1970, 68, 65 and 63. Quite a while ago now. It's got a twin cam engine as well. I don't really that often tend to look at the supercars anymore, mainly because they don't really do that well on the channel. But I've always got a bit of time for the Nissan GTR. I think this is the R35 generation. And I love these things just because of what they were. They were about 60, 70,000 pounds, which I know is a lot for a lot of people out there. But they had the performance figures that could match or were very, very close to the likes of Ferraris, Aston Martins, which are almost double or even triple the price depending on the particular model you got. So I've always got a bit of time for the GTR. Plus the way it was built, the graphics inside done by the team at Gran Turismo, which of course do the Gran Turismo game for Sony Playstations, which of course Japanese, so it keeps the Japanese theme going. And the tyres, I don't think they just use normal sort of everyday air, I suppose you would describe it in these. I think they went a bit more overboard than that. Pretty sure off the top of my head, it was nitrogen, but I could be wrong about that. I'll put a note on the screen just to say if I am wrong. Mustang's heading out. Obviously an import from America. Celine by the looks of it. But I like this little Datsun. I'm assuming it's a Datsun, judging by the age of it. So it's got a Skyline front end on it. Well, it's got a bit more power than standard as a pickup. Here comes 5 litre Mustang as well. Gorgeous little thing, this. Love that. Suspension sounds very stiff on that. A Suzuki powered Caterham just here. 58 rogue, so. A bit younger than my Panda. Just warming up as it looks like the owner's about to leave. Although I wouldn't necessarily say warming up is the right word to uh, describe today. I imagine it's pretty cold driving that home. Alfa Romeo Brera, gorgeous little coupe car, I think, based on the Alfa Romeo 159 platform, if memory serves correctly. These things, though, very much a poster car for many young boys' bedrooms. Peugeot 106 GTI. Well, these tiny little French fast hatchbacks that really caught everyone's imagination back in the uh, 90s. That's an interesting addition to this car. I don't know what exactly it does. I'm sure it does something, but pop out windows on this. Prescott Speed Hill Climb it's been too, so again, I imagine it's got a bit more power than standard. Oh look, the Chelsea in here has got a little cup holder. It's got a thermos. These cars, I imagine, because they're such lightweight, I imagine they're quite a bit of fun. Looks like they're a regular here at the Thruxton Circuit. Part of Peugeot Sport Club UK. And they've been to Haynes as well. An AC Cobra kit car. Oh, is there anything wrong with kit cars? They are a good way for people to obtain their dream car without spending many hundreds of thousands on them. Gorgeous Granada GX now. Love the way the lights sort of fold in and curve in. That's pretty nice. The interior very much looks original. Lovely colour though. Of course, orange, best colour. Vauxhall Lotus Carlton. Of course, car very much famous for uh, being a car that the police could just never catch at the time. So much so, they actually discussed in Parliament whether they should ban the sales of the Vauxhall Lotus Carlton. A very interesting car, got a very interesting story, especially one um, with an unplate 40 RA. So go and read up about that if you don't know about it. A lineup of Mini GP JCWs. Some Seats, BMWs. There's a good selection here. There's pretty much something here for everyone. This is the second event they've actually held here at Thruxton. I think the second one here this has been a lot more successful than the first one partially helped down to the weather i do like that dynaco livery focus though that's quite cool there's midi looking good there was a morgan super 3 part next to it which unfortunately seems to have left and a modern alpine a110 a bath 124 spider honda subarus scooby dutch you do and as we had a look at the old renault alpine Let's have a look at the new Alpine A110. 
Now I actually have had the pleasure of driving one of these at the Millbrook circuit for SMMT earlier this year. Great things, unfortunately didn't get time to take it onto the Alpine course, which of course given the namesake of this would have been absolutely fantastic. But a quick spin around the high speed bowl nonetheless was uh, very much enjoyable. Same engine as the Megan RS, about 250 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a lot, but Alpine wanted to go for lightness. It's one of the reasons why they selected having an automatic gearbox, because of course many, many years ago, an automatic gearbox would have been considered heavy. But nowadays, in modern technology and modern um, construction, an automatic gearbox is considered lighter now than a manual gearbox, especially in a car like this, so that's the direction they went. But the thing is as well, when you look at this compared to say the Toyota Supra, which when launched the Supra is very firmly, no, we are going to stick with automatic gearboxes and flappy paddles and all that. And now they're selling it with a manual. So there may well be a manual one of these one day. There's nothing about that. I'm just speculating. One thing I do like, the styling of this, absolutely gorgeous. It's a really good uh, homage and recreation of the original classic one. They've done a really good job with the modern technology. I remember seeing this when this was first advertised in magazines and think I thought, Alpine and Renault are onto an absolute winner with this. And I'm seriously passionate about this. If I could get any car here that was a modern sports car, as of the Lotuses and the Aston Martins, I'd choose one of these. I just love them that much. Renault Twingo, rear engine, rear wheel drive with these. Small boot there, but of course, what you like there, you gain up here. Again, another car I really very much like. That's the whole point of the highlights reel, really. It's just showing cars that I like. Tinsel in the back. Pop-out rear windows. 900cc turbo engine on this, I think, producing about 90 horsepower-ish. It's an engine that's shared with many Renault models. Obviously, you've got it in this, you've got it in the Clio, you've also got it in the Dacia Sandero. And time has been kind to it. The engines have proven pretty reliable. I like this. I prefer the previous Gen Twingo, I'll be honest, in the design department. Suzuki Swift Sport, another car I consider a rival of the Panda 100 HP. There's a little Mini poking out again. Shout out to follower Macaulay Sailhunt there with his Toyota Aris, sporting drum 24 7 as well. And here we've got a Genevieve sat inside. And this is Matt's new R53. What do you think of it, Matt? Obviously, it's your car. You're going to like it. Mid cheddar. Um, it's great. <laughs> Very I'll convincing. I'll do a proper summary when I've done some decent miles in it. Excellent. And that's a good way to end this video. But this is Matt's new car, R53 Mini 2005 Ridge. Looks nice. It's a little dirty. <laughs> it's a bit dirty. It's probably the dirtiest car here. But yeah, Matt is a massive fan of the original Minis and he's now been converted to modern Mini status. And he's away. Well, he started up the car, he's not quite away yet. Oh well. Now I've just spotted, this has just turned up, Vauxhall Monaro. Australian muscle car. I love those. But really, I think that brings a bit of an end to this video. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like. Comment down below, what was your favourite car in this highlights video? And the sun is very much in my eyes here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, I've been Jake. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Until then. Farewell.